Well, welcome everyone to Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. I'm your host, Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. On today's show, tax efficient retirement planning, part two in our series on optimizing your retirement plan with nationally recognized retirement expert and certified financial planner, Chris Jacob. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thanks once again. Great to be here. Uh, now, we've talked about this before, but we're updating everything right now. And this is really, I think, one of the top plans in the United States right now to really view, especially if you have significant, significant money. And I like keeping my money. I don't want to give it away to anybody else that I have to. I don't want to share with Uncle Sam. So why don't you walk us through a case study and how shows how you optimize this plan and how I got more dollars, not only for my income, but maybe even for my estate. Sure. And first, let's define the problem. Uh, folks don't realize that they've been building two retirement plans all along, uh, one for you and one for the federal government. So let's look at our case study here, Mr. Bill Stinson. He's got a million bucks. Uh, he's age 50. He's going to get 6% return on his money, and we're going to solve for, hey, just let it grow. But at age 66, let's solve for a level distribution that depletes the account by 90. Numbers look like this. Got a million dollars, get 6%. Of when he's out here at retirement, he's grown to $2.5 million. Now let's take that $2.5 million and let's solve for the level distribution which will deplete the account by 90. That figure, 187,475, is all of that his money? No. Okay? Mm -hmm. They didn't say it was tax free, they said it was tax deferred, or we like to call it tax postponed. Mm -hmm. And in a 30% bracket, how much tax are you gonna pay? Well, in his million-dollar qualified plan at a 30% bracket, he currently has an embedded $1.4 million tax. Uh, what if tax rates go to 40? Now he's got an embedded $1.8 million tax. Mm -hmm. So we call this the pension optimization plan, and really it's just a strategy legally to take money that's on the taxable side of that wall and get it over to the tax-free side of the wall, primarily with life insurance. What do we do? We have the profit sharing plan, and we touched on this in some of the other videos. Buy the life insurance with pre-tax dollars, usually three to five years worth of premiums. Buy that pre-tax. Ultimately, we are going to transfer, in this case, we are going to transfer the policy out for something called its fair market value, clearly defined in the RevProx from back in 2005. So we're using government rules. We're not making this stuff up to determine what is the fair market value you're going to pay tax once that policy is Because you're taking the out. policy out of the profit-sharing plan, right? and that's where the taxable event is. Exactly. Okay. So while it's in there, it's not taxed. But when I transfer it out, mm -hmm. Steve, it's going to be just like I transferred out 100000 That's taxable. Mm -hmm. Whatever that fair market value is, is going to be taxable. Now, does the government care where we go to get the money to pay the tax? Absolutely not. They mm -hmm. don't care. Now, one of the places, as we touched upon in some of these other videos, is once this policy's out, you can borrow using something called a participating loan. So let's just look at the math of do it versus don't do it. Uh, got a million bucks. That's it. Just that money. Let's focus on that in the qualified plan. And this individual, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. We'll say he drops to a 30% bracket in retirement. Rarely happens. Uh, his life expectancy is 83 and 6% return. Assuming he wants $175,000 net after tax at retirement, where is it going to come from? Well, there's only one place it can come from. Notice the red on here. It means he ran out of money. If he dies on time, everything works out okay. But even in a 30% bracket, what does he have to pre-tax pull in order to net $175,000? he has got a pre-tax pull $250,000. Now, let me just stop you there because I think most people that are retirees forget about this whole transaction. You told me that I needed $175,000. That's what he said he wanted to spend. That was his count. But he has to actually gross up a quarter of a million to make that play. This is what's going to deplete this account. I think that's why people miss, really misread their retirement. This whole issue of, hey, I'm trying to net that number to spend. Well, this is where you get the silent partner. And one of my favorite sayings is, Webster's definition of gross is ugly, and you don't get to spend it. Okay? Mm, yeah. Because when you report on your net worth statement, what do you report? <laughs> Most people are going to report that $2,061 mm -hmm. as the value of their retirement plan. I mean, if you have a house and you have a mortgage against it, don't you normally put the mortgage on there as mm -hmm. a liability? You've got a mortgage on here of 824000 to the bank of the IRS, okay? You should mm -hmm. not be reporting $2 million. You should be reporting $1 million too. Mm -hmm. So if we quantify what that tax is, obviously it's seventy five grand a year. Cumulatively, that's going to be $764,316 on tax. And if you and your wife die, in this case, if Bill and his wife die while this policy is, while the 
qualified money is still there, there's going to be something called an mm -hmm. income with respect to a decedent tax. Subtract that out, that's what heirs get. So let's talk about this pension optimization plan. We've got the same million that we had before, but you're going to see this new figure of $4,108,685, which is the minimum death benefit that we can get to accommodate what we want to fund this policy with. And the policy is going to look like this. We're going to fund it for $219,736 a year for five years. We are then going to transfer it out, at which point there will be a tax on the fair market value. In this case, that figure of 813710 in a 40% bracket, he's going to have a 325484 tax. We'll borrow that against the policy, and we still have enough horsepower left in this policy to generate 175000 of tax-free income. And back in one of those other videos where we talked about a participating loan, you can see, Steve, that's what we're doing here. Because mm -hmm. when you borrowed the money, you borrowed it from the insurance company. You didn't borrow it from your policy. So you're still getting credited on that full amount. This actually runs 175 all the way out to age 120. So now I still want the 175 for spendable cash flow, but I need the 219,736 to fund the policy. I need the 325 to pay the tax. So... If you look at this is what I need on the left, where's it going to come from? Newfound flow of money, loans on the life insurance policy. Here's me funding this for five years, having pre-tax dollars sent to the life insurance uh, company. At the end of five years, I fully funded the policy. Now I want to transfer it out. When I transfer it out, even though I had a million, my fair market value tax on this is going to be taxed on 813710 Again, clearly defined. We're going to borrow the money against the policy to pay that transfer tax. So think about this. You're paying the tax with somebody else's money, and that money, in fact, is still growing for you inside of the policy. So the total that we're going to pay here is 325484 net worth, cash value, net of the loan, plus the money while it's still pre-tax. What goes to heirs? There's still a little bit of income with respect to a decedent while there's some pre-tax dollars left in there. So when we compare the do it versus don't do it, 75 grand a year for tax while we're pulling it out under status quo, the 325 for the one time tax on the transfer out. So, in aggregate, 764 versus 325. I think this graph is the best depiction. 764,000 in total tax ran out of money. 325 did not run out of money. Okay, let's look at that total income that was produced. Obviously, the red is you ran out of money. Status quo. Pension optimization plan, don't run out of money. So a million seven versus 4.3, almost $2.6 million more in net after-tax cash flow for significantly less tax. Okay, let's see, how did you fare on the net worth perspective? A little less in the beginning because of the cash surrender charges and the life insurance policy, but substantially more down the road. I like to juxtapose that and keep in mind, you still got $2.6 million more net after-tax cash flow. And how did your heirs fare? Did they have to take it in the shorts on this? No, they did not. Uh, more all along. The blue is what the heirs get. We're dropping that policy down to the minimum that the government will allow us to drop it down to and still keep it as life insurance as opposed to an investment. And still, heirs are going to wind up with more. You wind up with more. Government, they still get the taxes, okay? So my favorite graphic, Steve. Look, $764,000 under status quo, taxes paid. 325 in this pension optimization plan. A million seven and you paid 764. 4.3 million and it was $325,000 of tax paid with OPM, other people's money, money mm -hmm. borrowed against the life insurance policy. So that's a real quick fire hydrant approach mm -hmm. to how we can optimize somebody's qualified plan assets mm -hmm. by doing this with part of the money that's in there. And that was an age 50-year-old. Does it work at 55 without going through all the numbers? Obviously, you can see that it does. Does it work at 60? It's still worth considering, I believe. Believe it or not, Steve, all the way up to 65, we can still make the strategy mm -hmm. work as an income play for the individual and that they will be mm -hmm. better off with more money in pocket than if they don't do it. WIIFM, what's in it for me, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, Einstein said the significant problems we face today can't be solved at the same level of thinking when, when we created them. That definitely holds true with your qualified plans. You have to think outside of the box how to solve this embedded tax problem that is just looming and getting larger all the time. So we have more videos on this subject and others. You can go to our website, check it out. 
others that we've done mm -hmm. in the past, but these are the updated numbers with the updated graphics. Well, I want to thank Chris for sharing our series now on optimizing your retirement plan. And keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or your financial advisor. You've been watching Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. Oh my God.